Hello, and this is Shut and Shogun in person with a little review. This is another one of these videos that I like to do every once in a while and might become, I'm thinking, like a monthly fixture where I just try and switch things up. I do love magic, but I do also enjoy other things. Now, our little uh, in person vlog review thing for today will be, I guess you would call it a review or an unboxing or some sort of uh, mixture of those terms and others. And I finally splurged, and many of the uh, the <laughs> YouTubers I follow have uh, had subscription or not subscriptions, have had sponsorships. That's the word for Boxu subscriptions. And guess what came in the mail today? Hey! Now, this is one of those I haven't opened this at all, shy of taking it out of the packaging that it came in when it got delivered. It didn't terribly <laughs> survive the uh, transit in total, so I'm hoping this isn't somehow in a million pieces, which would kind of suck. Now, this is the first box of these, and as I loosely understand it, the first box of these, um, what's the word, has like an, an overall preview, and then subsequent months that we might actually do similar videos for, uh, will what's the word, uh, lean into the themes more? I could be wrong, this could be totally outdated information. Hell, it probably is outdated information, to be fair. Now, with that out of the way, I guess we'll just kind of do this. Go ahead and open this bad boy up. Let us see here. Oh, a nice little card thing with a uh, thank you. I'll show the camera as it likes to not focus. No? Nothing? Well, I'll read it out just in case. Alright, thank you. Since my early days of living in Japan, I have loved discovering delicious snacks from local Japanese snack makers, which is why I'm thrilled to present you the first box curated across, this culturally, across the culturally rich regions. This is another part where my little baby dyslexia comes out. You and your sister are having a ball. Uh, across these culturally rich rich regions and seasons of Japan, I would also like to wholeheartedly thank and welcome you to the Baksu family. Uh, with an active membership, in addition to receiving monthly themed snack boxes, so you can get a member-exclusive discount on all orders in the market, join our community, gain access to some exclusive stuff, and so much more. Alright, it's a nice little, you know, thank you card. So we'll go on the magical table next to me. Again, uh, I would like to also point out these little scurries you hear in the background. <laughs> my cats are playing around and they are making lots of noise, but they're happy, so what do you get there? Let's see, Seasons of Japan. I guess we'll do this. And again, we'll try and just sort of skim through this. Seasons of Japan, Boxu Culture Guide. Uh, now. Let's see, the first page. Welcome to Boxu. So excited to start this journey Japan with you. People from all around the world visit Japan to experience both tradition and innovation, as I hope to myself and many others hope to one day as well. Uh, what's, when's the best time to enjoy Japan? You might wonder spring, summer, fall, and winter. They all have something to offer. That's why every box is handpicked to, to bring Japan to you, which is nice since, you know, when you're poor and non-college educated, and by really all means, <laughs> non-desirable. The ability to do these things are very limited in your life, so I'll, I'll take some slight little insights where I can get them. Let's see, explore holidays, regions, and festivities, one snack at a time. Each box comes with a culture guide, like this one, where you can learn about each snack, the makers who make them, and the cultural inspiration for each snack curation. So I'm assuming the remainder of this will be individuals, or individual snack uh, info, for lack of a better word. Seasons of Japan, there's nothing quite like the changing leaf colors and the shift in the air that makes you feel alive. In Japanese culture, the ephemer oh god, <laughs> the ephemerality of life making each day something to be cherished for the uniqueness, for the uniqueness it holds. God, I gotta like, <laughs> enunciate. Festivals throughout the year celebrate the beauty of each season, its beginning and its end. Uh, please note there are, oh, thank God for allergens as a per, I mean, unless there's like prawn crisp or some like, or crackers or whatever. 
as a person who only really has to worry about a shellfish allergy, we'll be fine. We don't really got to worry about that all too much. Uh, please note, common allergens listed throughout this guide are directly translated from the packaging as reference. We cannot guarantee the presence or lack of certain allergens in the products, so please consume snacks at your own risk. Be careful. They, as I understand it, they just basically, like, literally translated it, which I'm sure that, that historically never goes wrong, ever, with any language. Nice little picture of some sakura. Experience what see each season has to offer. <laughs> spring. Spring boasts a short burst of cherry blossoms that quickly fade away. During the cherry blossom season, people often gather for hanami. I know, flower viewing. Yeah, literally flower viewing. Thank you. Uh, friends and family sit beneath the flowers and enjoy good food and drinks. Let's see. Summer. Japan turns citrus fruits. Certain citrus fruits to keep turns two citrus little 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 <laughs> turns two citrus fruit to keep cool during the intense heat waves. Citrus is there to keep not subate summer fatigue at bay. Yeah, nice. Uh, so Japan summer festivals are also especially known for their fantastic fireworks display and street food. Let's see, autumn. Take a hike under the fiery fall leaves and experience fall flavors like mushroom and apple and uniquely Japanese dishes. Like spring's hanami, Japan also celebrates koyo. Yeah, koyo, yeah. Are the changing leaves, and the people often help to... Oh, God, Momo... Oh, this is where my, like, limited knowledge of Japanese is stretched. And the people head out for momojigari. Momojigari, autumn leaf hunting. And then there's winter. Winter in Japan always makes us think of the northern prefectures blanketed in fluffy white snow. Head out to one of the many snow festivals across the country. And keep chilly at night. Chilly nights at bay with grilled corn and roasted sweet potatoes found at a western festival. That actually sounds kind of amazing. But I'm also hungry. Which is why I waited to do this. There we go. Now we're getting to individual things. Hi, Caramel. Hi, Brown Sugar. My little girl. Now, the real trick will be finding these things. And I might edit out the, like, searching through things here. We'll figure this out. Hell, <laughs> who knows what will survive the editing room process. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Look, right now, we're looking for Mochan Dango Mochi. I like mochi. think we can maybe show this on the thing. All right, we have found the, again, the, let's see if I can get this properly in frame. The mochi, as I believe. Ta da! And actually, there's two! Er, well, two! <laughs> Here is the first little white one. Mmm, that's lovely. That's so good! That's like a good amount of sweet. What is that? I mean, the texture is mochi, but. If you've never had it before, it's like the nicest gummy you've ever had. Just with like a very nice sugar is the best way I can describe it. That's lovely. That's amazing. Now, the real question will be, will the different colors just correlate to different colors or actual different flavors? Honestly, if they all just taste like the first one, that's fine. Okay. This might just be my cultured, unrefined palate. But they appear, the different colors, and we'll go ahead and work on the last one, appear to just be a, honestly, a very, a very pretty colors. You know, very bright and festive. But as far as I can tell, they don't translate to different flavors, which is fine. And the last one. Those are lovely. I could totally see myself. <laughs> I could totally see myself munching on the second pack in a little while, or as a snack in the future. The Mochandango Mochi. Just like a thumbs up. Yeah, pretty good. We also, I try not to do like stars or numbers, because what 
uh, one certain amount of stars or numbers mean can vary wildly. So I figured the vagueness of thumbs up, thumbs down, or somewhere in the middle is pretty adequate. Now, we go on now to the next one. Stick Potato. Super Machu Plum. Made by Koi Kea. Koi Kea. Koi Kea. Yeah. Like an ode to the Japanese plum tree, every bite of these th of these thin, crispy potato sticks carries the floral notes of plum blossoms. The sourness of umeboshi and the earthy earthiness of shiso, perilla leaves. I know everyone except for the last. We'll also try and don't mean to, to, to bend this up, so we're going to try and be a little bit safe. So now we look for... Dun, dun, dun. It'll be the second one, right about here. So we'll go ahead and come back when we find this one, buried in the box. That gets like a, a thumb, a good thumbs up. At first it was like a little weird as I got to, or as I was getting used to it, but it quickly did really good. This might actually be a snack for tonight. Anywho, we are now moving on to the next one. The next one we will be looking for is... Da -da 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 -da, trying to find this right about here. Not quite certain what it is exactly. Let's see, this delicate biscuit is a luxurious blend of 20th century Asian pear. Oh, it's like a pear? All right, all right. Of Asian pear, rich cheese, and decadent white chocolate. Oh, okay. So it's like um, like a like I would call it like a like a, like a snack cracker. So we'll cut away, and I'll come back when I find it. And we have returned, and we have found the pear fromage biscuit. There's actually two, so that will be another thing that goes into the. I'm probably gonna finish this later. Uh, flavor is sweet, as I would imagine. Although the cheese. Would seem to counteract the idea of sweet, but that's fine. Let's see, common allergens of milk, eggs, wheat, and soy. So we're fine. All right, but something's not that bad. Yeah, this is uh, the little cracker in question. Are we gonna focus at all? Nah. Well, what are you gonna do? As we <laughs> attempt to figure this out. Ah! Ow. Okay, I mean, it, it, it snapped, but it did snap down the middle, so we get a nice cross-section of it. That pear... That smells like... Let's see if we can actually... I would love to be able to, like, properly show that. There we go. You can kind of see the innards. <laughs> uh, I mean, it smells like... Like a yogurt, but not in a bad way. I, I like yogurt. So I guess we'll just give it a try. A little messy, but it's also really hot today. I'm sorry. This delicate biscuit is a luxurious blend of 20, 20th century Asian pear. Niji Sekai... Saiki, sorry. Saiki, nice sheet. Rich cheese. What is rich cheese? That doesn't tell me anything. And decadent white chocolate. It tastes... I mean, maybe... The cheese is, like, non-existent in that. This tastes like... Honestly, like if you put, like, like a yogurt between two nice little, you know, biscuits or crackers, whatever you want to call them. It is not bad by any stretch of the definition. On the thumbs up to thumbs down scale, it gets like a there. It's not bad. It's like a weird, it's a pleasant mix of like a sweet and almost like a savory. I guess I just, I don't taste that, that cheese in there. So that's what like kind of puts it here and not there. 
But maybe, again, it's just my lower born palate and all that. Now we move on to the next one. The next is White Strawberry. It's a box zoo exclusive. Very nice. Hmm. Made by Boxu. It's nice, they actually make their own thing, which is good. This is the world's first chocolate-infused strawberry. I don't know if it's the... Eh, eh. <laughs> Strawberries are harvested, harvested freeze-dried, infused with white chocolate, and cooled for a chocolate with all the flavor of a fresh strawberry. Not bad, I mean, I like strawberry, I like chocolate. It's a white chocolate, but really... I don't think that's going to matter terribly much. I'm a little concerned about freeze-dried food coming all the way across. It smells good. Luckily, I can just see it in the packs. So we don't actually have to cut away here. You can smell the strawberry. I mean, it's very, very clearly a strawberry here. I don't think that's too much that we have to, like, really debate. It's just, you can smell that little extra twang that I imagine is the, the white chocolate, was it? So we'll try. Eat the ducky mask. Mmm. Mmm. Hmm. It's not made poorly. And this is more... This is gonna get like... Like right in the middle there. Because it's way more chocolate than strawberry. It's not even close. I'll try one more. There's only two in here. I also personally am not the biggest fan of strawberry. But to be fair, they're just whole strawberries. It's not like a artificial thing or a, uh, a genuine thing. That's not it. I just... I'm not like super over the moon about strawberry. Again, we'll go ahead and... Just down the neck one. The second one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, I imagine if you like strawberry all day long, Jack, I am like so so on strawberry, so that's why it gets a eh. But it's not bad. This makes it sound worse than it is, so it's like, eh, like there. Anywho, now again, we go on to the next one. Now, the next one is. Edamame Senbei, which is like soybean... Senbei, I don't know. I, I know what... That name is in my head for some reason that I've heard it before. See, Edamame Senbei. It was summer harvested edamame bits baked into a cracker. Ah! The Senbei is sprinkled with kinako. Kinako roasted soybean powder. That's a deliciously nutty crunch. Hell yeah, this sounds kind of good. And luckily, I happily actually managed to find it already. Here we are. Now. Oh, those smell... F oh my god, those smell fucking amazing! Holy! That smells lovely! They look, like, very cool. They have, like, a, a lovely, like, color to them. Chance we can... kind of get a good shot. Like it's, it's, it looks lovely. It has a wonderful smell to it. It's like everything you want out of like a, like a savory snack. That's not bad at all. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Two thumbs way up. That's lovely. That's the best thing so far. I'm eating another one of these right away. Oh my god. It's great. It's like... 
everything I enjoy in a savory snack. A good build up, high plateau, doesn't stay too long, goes quietly down. Hi, Caramel. You want to come say hi? Oh my god, that's so good. I'm going to actually have another one. Come on, come say hi to camera. You don't want to? Alright. Okay, these are, again, they're so good. I gotta put these away. I'll hoover that whole bag. Oh my god, those are lovely. <laughs> we'll now go on to the next one. We are right back. I have found the next thing, but I would like to uh, correct a mistake. This is not the item on my senbei. I'm an idiot, and read the uh, pamphlet thingy wrong. The last one was the seaweed tempura satoshi sudachi. These ad yeah, these addictive seaweed sheets are battered, fried, and flavored with native Japanese sudachi citrus to get a crisp and tangy snack. Yeah, the last ones were these. This is what we'll be going for now. That was my fault. We are looking now at the edamame senbei. Again, pardon that little faux pas. I'm a big old dum-dum. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Person trying to do this all in one shot. Not bad. Ooh. Like a... I guess it's the, the roasted soybean powder of it, but that smokiness smells lovely. A little bit of a close-up, if we can get the... Yeah! Thank you, <laughs> camera, for cooperating. I guess we'll just try it. This, again, is the actual edamame senbei. Mmm! Mmm-mm-mm. Deliciously Nutty Crunch was right. That's also very good. Oh, thank God we got to the... <laughs> we got to the savory things. I love savory so much. Oh, these are great. There's also another one of these that came with two. So if you're a savory boy like me, you can really enjoy this. And really, credit to the makers for having to go literally halfway around the world. Your things have held up and traveled remarkably well. Mmm. Nice crunch. Like, again, like a good nutty little rise. And then it just stops. It doesn't overstate the welcome at all. That's lovely. We'll have the last little bit of this. Mmm. -hmm. I don't know. Seaweed tempura. Sudachi sudachi. Setochi sudachi. You know better, Max. <laughs> Actually pronounce it right. Or even somewhat right. Because it's not. We move on now to the next one. And we're back. The next one is Handmade Yuzu Sake Candy. From the Boksu Maker Series. Made by Boksu X Daimonji. Daimonji. Yeah, Daimonji. Daimonji. This candy is handcrafted by the artisans at Daimonji exclusively for Boksu. Might as well use that market share. Our version blends yuzu juice and peel with sake for a refreshingly citrus, citrusy candy. This candy also contains 0.1% alcohol content, so please consume responsibly. I think somehow we'll manage to live. Now, luckily these ones pretty self-explanatory, honestly. Okay, the, the, the beauty vlogger trick thing. So these weren't that terribly hard to find. They're also way easier to open if they just have a traditional perforated edge. He says before he goofs this. Did he goof it? He didn't goof it. Here they are. Again, gotta do the, uh, the beauty vlogger thing. Just a clear little sweep. Nothing to... Right home color wise, but it looks fine. Mmm. 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 
That's really good. Mmm. I like this a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is a hard candy, so I'm not going to bother trying to do more than one. These are lovely. It's just a very smooth... Like, the sweetness is there. But it's not really loud and in your face. It's just like a nice little... What do you call it? Like it's an undercurrent. Oh, man. Those are lovely. Absolutely lovely. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. And the flavor does stay if you manage to actually get through it. So it's nice and consistent all the way through. That's not bad. Nice. Pretty good for a sweet thing. Not going to lie. Two thumbs up. Now, in just a minute, we'll go on to the next one. And we're back. And we have a little brown sugar baby guest. Hi, honey. You want to come and hang out while Dad does his little reviewy unboxy thing? He'd be happy to have you. Anywho. Next is Don Don Yaki. Made by Kaido. Bye, honey. I love you. Named after the sound. Okay, it's an onomatopoeia. Named after the sound of the beating taiko drums heard throughout festivals in Japan, these savory senbei are fried. These savory senbei are fried and marinated in tonkatsu sauce for a flavor that is tangy, peppery, and a little sweet. I like a good tonkatsu ramen, though I haven't had one in a long time. I'm the only legit Japanese restaurant in town that didn't survive COVID. So that's. Honey, I love you, but don't mess with the camera. I know there's, like, things all over the table. <laughs> Anywho. It's very cute little art, though. Yep. Very cute. Not gonna lie. Anywho. Try and... Hey, these open very easy. More scent. Ooh. I guess that's the tangy and peppery. That's a good smell for it. I didn't even think. Not bad. That's what they look like. A little close up. I feel this will mirror the potato stick. And that it will grow on me. Because they're not bad. They're just kind of... Hold on, let's try a couple more. I was right. Tangy, peppery, and a little sweet. But maybe it's just because the size of them is so bad. It is kind of like the potato stick thing from earlier. Where they're so small that you really gotta, like, pop them back to, like, really be able to, like, marry it in the flavor. If you eat them one at a time, it's like a, it's a good flavor. It's very nice, and it gets, still gets a thumbs up. The only thing that makes it go from, like, thumbs up to, like, eh, is that on an individual level, they're, like, <laughs> their, their duration of their flavor is like a fruit-striped stick of gum. It's like, flavor, gone. And that's it. It's not bad, though. Still finish it. Do one more. Just to get some, like, missing out on, like, a good piece. Yeah. A little tangy. Yeah. It's better when you had two. Yeah. Like, it's the potato stick thing where you gotta have a good amount of them coming in to really enjoy the flavor. To, like, enjoy the flavor. For it to be there lo around long enough for it to matter. Pretty good. It's like a there. Pretty good. Go ahead. Move on to the next one.
Next is the Hokkaido Red Bean Donuts, another Boksu Maker series. If it's anything like the uh, the Yuzu sweets, the Yuzu Sake sweets. Fingers crossed. Anyway. Anywho, made by Boksu X Han Hanma. Yeah. These delicious donuts are filled with Anko red bean paste made with azuki beans from Hokkaido. They're comforting and rich and a perfect snack for colder weather, which it is not. It's the height of summer in Indiana. It's like 100 degrees outside with the humidity. Or whatever that is in... in Celsius. Like... I think it's like 30s. Like, like upper 30s. 40. Anyway. Luckily, these things actually kind of stick out pretty well. They look nice, though. There's a liquid in the box. But again, that might just be literally from traveling. I doubt it's anything that I need to be, like, concerned about. It smells nice. It smells like, a, it smells like dough. Yeah, it just smells like a donut. Of course, when it's the interior is the good bit. Of course, the outside's gonna smell like it. But yeah, it's literally, uh, in a, uh, at least where I'm from in America, we would call these donut holes a little less than donuts, but it's really, you're splitting hairs. Don't worry too much about it. <sighs> Pardon the burps. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really lovely. Yeah. I love that. That's like... It's again, it's like a low sweetness that just kind of hangs out and doesn't get too loud. But it has like a lovely texture to it. When you bite into it... Might not be able to tell. But the red you see right above where my finger is, that is the red bean paste. And you think the outside layer, that like fluffiness of the dough would be lost. But the red bean basically like mirrors that same like airy texture. So like nothing is really lost. That's really good. Do them way up. That kicks ass. That's great. That's really, really good. Holy crap, that's amazing. Mmm. And there's still, like, the flavor is, like, lingering enough in my mouth where I can still enjoy it after it's gone. That's gorgeous. That's awesome. Man, why can't America do, like, cool, sweet things? Well, on a national level, America doesn't do... Nice, subtle, sweet things. We're just like, sugar! <laughs> well, that's what happens when it's subsidized, yo. Anywho, on to the next one. Next is Matcha Chocolate Stick Cake. Made by Nakajima Taishodo. Taishodo. Hi, Caramel! This soft cake uses matcha from Uji, Kyoto, which is known for its high-quality matcha. Pairing earthy matcha with a bittersweet chocolate chip with bittersweet chocolate chips give this gives this cake a rich, subtly sweet flavor. Which is good. Subtly sweet is my jam. Also managed to find it. Looks alright. This might be a little bit harder to beauty vlogger my way up. Looks alright. Admittedly there was only one of this, but it is really honking big. Go ahead and... Oh, come on, don't... There we go. Hmm. Again, kind of smells like dough. <laughs> like the breading or whatever it's made in. But it's not bad. It doesn't smell bad anyway. We just go ahead and... Eat the duck. Come on. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I 
that earthiness is like you really gotta like like look for it because boy oh boy that the, the bitter sweetness of that what I imagine to be a darker like a cooking chocolate I mean, man that, that thing is <laughs> that bitter sweetness is just like rushing to fill the void try that again though hang on Hmm. Okay, that's a little better. It's like very distinctly though. Like it starts out earthy and it ends up bittersweet from the chocolate. Darker chocolates are kind of like a strawberry to me. They're like a like a here-ish on the scale, like a here-ish. But if you love dark chocolate, I can see you really getting into this. And I don't hate it. I don't want that to be the uh, the, the prevailing thought. So I will finish this. Hmm. 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 Yeah. You gotta like, kind of like the strawberry thing. You gotta like that, that dark chocolate bitterness, bittersweetness kind of finish to that. If you don't, like I'm not like over the moon about it, it'll be like a there for you too, I imagine. Still good though. Totally edible. An, enjoy, an enjoyable experience. Nonetheless. Now we move on to the next one. And we're back. With the next one being a Black Sesame Taiko... Kumamon design, black sesame drum. Oh, yeah. Each of these CD drums are handmade in Kumamoto, the hometown of Kumamon, by roasting almonds. Don't fall on me now, box. By roasting almonds and sesame seeds and mixing them by hand with, let's see, Mizuame sugar syrup over heat. They're then hand pressed into the disc and left to cool in this deliciously nutty snacks. Into this deliciously nutty snack. Blah, 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 blah. All right, all right. Hmm. We shall see. Not gonna lie, the packaging is very cute, but but Japan does knock out uh, character designs pretty well. Now it's fighting me. Or is another one I have to open on the side? Yep. There we go. Okay. Which is fine. It does, yeah, super nutty. But I like, I, I like like nutty flavors. So we're kind of all right with this. Actually, I can do this like this. It is, man, it looks almost, it looks very pretty in a way. Like an odd way. But not bad though. Anywho, first bite. Mmm. Mmm. That's not bad. I think calling this flavor like sweet. Like way more nutty. Which is not bad. They're not bad. They're not. It's just a little much. It's like genuine hockey puck sized in diameter. Admittedly, very thin. But I feel like it could have been like smaller. 
Because the flavor, it's just nutty. There's like a little bit of that like um, mizuame, that sugar syrup in there. And that's clearly what's binding this whole thing together. But it's just nut. There's no subtlety. It's just hammer of a nut. I'll take one last bite. But that's that's actually the first one that's like a eh, eh. If you really love nutty flavors, and you don't like overly complicated things, it'll be for you. But eh, it's like there. Like there. -ish. Yeah, one more. But we'll give one last little nibble. Yeah. I'll finish it, but I won't finish it today. That really is just trying to, like, beat you over the head with that nuttiness. That's the least, like, elegant or delicate one so far. Yeah. Anywho, on to the next one. Next one is the Almarie Apple Caramel Yakoi Sable. This is, uh, Almarie's like a, like a prefecture in, like, like, Tohoku's, like, like, right next, right next to, like, Hokkaido, isn't it? I know that because it brought in Japan. Anywho, made by, oh, boy, Raguene Usas, oh my god, Sasuke, Sasaki. That is one of those, I apologize, my, I, my limited knowledge of Japanese. I cannot say that fast. I have to meter it out. Anywho, this cookie uses apples exclusive from Aomori's Japan Apple Prefecture. It's their thing, apparently. The addition of sweet apple caramel butter gives this sable style cookie a yakoi soft and chewy texture. Okay. I already managed to find it. And really, if this is as much damage as it's going to suffer in transit, like one little hairline, well, not a hairline, one little fracture, not bad. Now, the million dollar question, down the middle or on the side? On the side. I smell a lot of apples. Hmm. Hmm. Good texture. Kind of like a like a softer like I guess you would call it like a it like a homemade cookie. Hmm, that's nice. I'm not making a mess at all. That's not bad. This one is basically like all of the apple, but unlike the nut um, taiko drum thing, it like doesn't just try and beat you over the head with the apple. It's like very light, like really in the background. It's actually pretty good. It's like, yeah, it's like pretty good. Thumbs up. I'm actually gonna take another bite of this. Mm mm mm. Trying not to be rude and talking with my mouth full. Yeah, that's a good salt thumbs up. That's pretty good. Now we move on to the next one. And we're back. The next one is the Funwari Meiji Mochi Puffs Kinako, made by Ichigo Seika. Seika, yeah. They transform mochi into crisp and airy into the crisp and airy texture of this cloud-like confection using a secret proprietary process. The puffs are finished with a dusting of kanako, again the roasted, roasted soybean powder, for a wildly addicting sweet nutty flavor. They look pretty nice. Not gonna lie. They're probably, yep. Yeah. Anymore, we're just going to assume they open on the side. 
have that same very, very nice, like, roasted scent to them. Not bad. Mmm. Mmm. Wonderful. Yeah, it's like made mochi, very airy. That's lovely. That's awesome. That's really good. It's really good. Mm-mm. That's like two thumb. Mm-mm. <laughs> mm mm Mm. That's wonderful. That's so good. That's lovely. Not the best thing today, but it's up there. It's like on the podium. I might have one more, and then we'll go on to the next one. And we're back. We're on to the next thing, and almost the last thing, as I understand it. Which is just some organic Gin Maicho tea. Which is right above you here. But you might be able to read that. I have... I had to brew the actual tea. Which, admittedly, I'm not much of a tea drinker, but that's more that from where I live, I just don't want to have sweet tea all the fucking time. So, I suppose we'll just try it. I know it's probably a little hotter than it should be, but my uh, free time is running a little low. I'm hoping this doesn't totally kill it. It's not bad. It's got, like, a nuttiness. Uh, again, my chose a combination of green tea with roasted brown rice. That explains that. Rice was originally added to help extend a smaller amount of expensive tea across many cups. From its humble origins as a prudent economic measure, Gin Maicha has remained popular in Japan for its warm and comforting taste. Yeah! I can see that, like, 100%. Mmm. That roastedness is, like, lovely. It adds so much more to the, like... It, if you live in the Midwest of America, like I do. If you can get green tea, it's all just the very bitter stuff. Which, to be honest, is not, like, amazing. <laughs> but this roastedness... And even then, there's not really even a, a bitterness to it. Which is nice. It's, like, all roasted, which is, like, lovely. That's lovely. Yeah, I, I can totally see myself finishing that. Got to put this somewhere safe, because if the cats knock it over, it's just going to be a miserable, miserable time for all parties involved. There you go. Down there. Actually, down there. It's a tea. Don't mess with it, honey. It's very hot. It's not very hot, but it's like cat hot. Anywho, on to the next And we're back to our next one, which is the Puku Puku Tai Chocolate, made by Maito Sangyo. Thai or red snapper are associated with New Year's celebrations as a symbol of good fortune. The snack shares that lucky shape, but is filled with an airy chocolatey mousse. Not bad. Yeah, you get that box, honey. <laughs> uh, an airy chocolate mousse and the two mochi wafers are a nod to the more traditional Japanese sweet monaka. Monaka, yeah. Luckily, I have so happened to find it. After this, I believe we only have one more, and then our little, uh, excursion is done. What are you doing, you absolute goober? Anywho. So it's just like some... mochi wafers with some, uh, airy chocolate? It's like all wafer, really. <laughs> Which is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. I imagine this will be okay. I see nothing wrong with it. Mmm, okay. That's very airy. That's lovely. It looks like it's going to be all wafer from the outside. But once you get down to it, it's like a lot of chocolate and a very good mix of it. And the bits of air that you might be able to actually see help to lighten up, which would normally be, this was all chocolate, would be very dense. But the very light wafer and the very 
the airy texture of the chocolate make this very good. Mm mm mm. Mm. That there, that's good. That's fine. That's two thumbs up. Not a whole lot special going on. But sometimes you don't need to be. Sometimes it's just some good wafer and some good chocolate. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, all that stuff. Yeah, two thumbs, way up. And now we move on to our final item for the day, which is uni rice crackers, which is a fan favorite, apparently, according to Buxu's little uh, pamphlet thing. Made by Bunchi. These delicious fried crackers pull their lovely umami flavor from uni sea urchin. Oh. I can't eat it. Well, shit. Having a shellfish allergy basically means I actually can't eat these. It's not worth getting sick. It'll ruin my whole day. I won't die. But I'd like to not... I'd like to be able to breathe for the rest of the day. Bit of a bummer to end up on one that we can't really eat, but what again, though? That happens sometimes in an island nation. Ooh, and they have a little uh, Discover Where Your Snacks thing are from. And it has, like, a little map of Japan where all of the aforementioned snacks are. And they have little arrows pointing to them. That's honestly very cool. And it's something that I wish America did more. We don't really do local stuff. Everybody's trying to do basically the same thing as everyone else is doing. Which is terribly sad. Ah, okay, we can... And then there is some extra stuff about Meteor Makers, and we can explore the market and stuff. But that appears to be all there is for, uh... our little... first episode of our Japanese sweet journey. Just wanted to say thank you for watching, if you have. I do apologize, this is my first real time ever being on camera. First time ever using the camera you see here. And my first time ever really doing this. I know it's going to be really rough, but I have to start somewhere <laughs> as a base point to get better. So thank you all for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Sub if you like me and my content. And you want to see this or other, my other myriad of weird bits of content that I do in the future. And if you want to talk about things in the comments below, hey, that's what they're there for. Just keep it civil and everything's fine. Thank you all. Have a great day. Stay safe out there.